Ladies, welcome back to The Feminine Mystery. My name is Azalea Dawn, and today we're just going to get right into it because we're talking level up. We're talking leveling up in 2024, specifically for those of you who want to be living a luxury lifestyle. Now, I understand that things look a certain way, especially through, you know, like social media, you know, filters, blah, 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 Instagram. And not everything is what it seems to be. But when you are out and about in the real world, it's hard not to notice that there are people just living very differently in life. The gap between the rich and the poor is widening, I'm sure we have all noticed. And unfortunately, the thing about society is that the arteries of society, so to speak, are kind of hardening. Right now, I really think it's going to be one of the last opportunities just as a whole, as a generation for people to really cross social divides between upper and lower class. I really do think the aspect of class mobility is changing. And if you want to be on a certain side of it, now is the time to take action and take yourself to where you want to be. So today I'm going to be talking all about what I would do if I was sitting here right here right now, had to start over from scratch. I had nothing. But what was in my head? What would I do to start leveling? up right now. So if this is of interest to you, then keep watching. Again, my name is Azalea Dawn, and on my channel I talk about leveling up femininity and everything related to hypergamy, finding the right uh, hypergamous relationship for yourself, and really leveling up in all aspects for feminine women. So if any of that interests you, then check out the rest of the channels on my video. But for now, let's get started with this one. The first thing I really think that you must do is create a vision of your most delicious life. Now, a lot of what goes into anything, any sort of big goal, is the difference between immediate gratification and long-term gratification, long-term thinking. A lot of long-term thinking has to do with being proactive. It has to do with doing work that is not immediately required of you. And that is what I think a lot of people struggle with in a lot of different areas of their life. They just don't feel very motivated to take action, nor motivated enough to sustain that action. So when I say like develop a vision of your most delicious life, I'm not just talking about like, oh, okay, like this is something where you can like fill out a page in like a journal and like, you know, click your heels three times and like your life is going to change like hashtag manifestation. No, I am literally talking about just the science of human behavior. In order to motivate yourself to take action, you have to right have to have a compelling vision of the future this is one of the things biologically that distinguishes human beings from other animals you can envision the future your dog cannot do that i'm sorry to like break it to you you know you may love him very much or her very much but your dog cannot imagine possible futures you as a human being can and that is one of the things that you need to use to your advantage so you are going to want to use your vision of the future to like to motivate yourself and you do that through basically creating a list of wants but if you're like a more like negative person you can do this through a list of don't wants right if you are somebody who like struggles to think positively we're gonna work on that we can change that but for now i want you to actually list out a list of things physically using you know like a pencil or pen and a piece of paper list out things that you do not not want in your future, whether that is a health crisis or, you know, uh, poverty or some sort of, you know, like negative romantic consequence, or maybe it's not having children by a certain age. List out all of the things, period, that you do not want. And then the second part is I want you to rank them one to five with five being you absolutely do not want this. This would be catastrophic for you. It, you just really don't want that to happen. It would be crazy versus one, okay? So that's your list of don't wants. And then I want you to use that list of don't wants to create a list of wants for yourself in the future. What do you want to happen in your life? What is your positive 
vision. And that is what I want you to look at whenever you are struggling for motivation to take action, right? Whenever something is hard because things are going to get hard, it is not fun to wake up in the morning and get on a treadmill, let me tell you. But if you really want to keep going, you need to consult that list and look at the things that you want and look at the things that you don't want because let me tell you some of the things that you can imagine as you know some of the things that you can come up come up with from your own imagination excuse me are much worse than anything that I can tell you and once you have that down on like a piece of paper and you either have it just like you know screenshotted and like in your phone or like you have it like taped somewhere where you're gonna see it every day it's very hard to like stay in bed instead of going to do your workout so absolutely take advantage of this create a vision of your most delicious future and an anti-vision things that you don't want to happen to you and put it somewhere where you're going to see that second thing that we're going to do here is you are going to commit to being your own savior now this sounds very simple but it is one of the biggest things that i think really is like the difference between certain people who just kind of like lay over and you know they like let i like let life just happen to them right they are not an active participator in their own lives versus people that are right people that decide that they are going to make the life that they want happen for them that is the mindset shift that i really think is critical to make and it does not cost you anything right i think that a lot of times people feel as though like their mindset and the way that they feel their emotional landscape is a result of the life that they've been given but really it's exactly the opposite your life the life that you're living looking around you the life that you have if you don't like it it is a result of your emotional landscape it is the complete opposite of the way that most people kind of feel as though it is you feel like if you were you know living in a castle somewhere you know that you would <laughs> imagine like that you would feel differently that you would feel as though everything was great in the world and everything was under control but it's the opposite it is feeling as though you are in control of your life and your future that gives you the power to like really attract and manifest the life that you want and live in these places it is literally the opposite so you have to commit to being your own savior don't sit around and wait for things to happen to you you go happen to life right? seriously you have to motivate yourself that you are going to be the person who takes action to change every aspect of your life that you do not like you're not going to wait for better genes or for this or that to happen you're not going to wait for a better job you're not going to wait for you know like the right partner to come to you i know that everybody you know likes to say that but that is a toxic mindset we're not going to wait for the right this or that to happen we're going to go and find what we need to find for ourselves right and that does not have anything to do with not being in your feminine energy there is a lot to be said for being a receiver especially in the context of a relationship but what i think a lot of these people who say that kind of thing online are not getting is that they're not in the right rooms and you as a woman you need to put your in the right room you need to go get that invitation you need to make sure that people want to have you in that room because you look good <laughs> right? that is the kind of missing link that I see with a lot of people that is the difference between you know like sitting and letting life just kind of happen to you versus you deciding that you are going to save yourself you are going to be your own you know knight on a white horse coming to like save you you need to understand that in your life you are in a plane, let's say, like, it's giving Amelia Earhart, like, you are in a plane, there is one passenger and one pilot, and both of those people are you. If the plane goes down, you go down with the plane. Nobody else goes down with you. <laughs> there are a lot of people in this world who are dedicated to taking other people down with them, but you just need to cut those people off. But we're going to talk about that next. All right, now that we've covered mindset, we're going to start to get into the work. Now, the next thing that you need to do is rebuild yourself a positive reputation. 
I cannot stress this enough, and I am talking like a crazy person right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, there are some people listening to me, but you know, it's fine. Um, look, this is something I am kind of struggling with, like, how to say this in, like, a way that is, like, kind, but also, like, direct. I have seen a lot. There are people who have, like, this mentality that other people have to take them as they are, and that is not true. Nobody, leave the take me as I am mentality behind. I've talked about this before on my channel, but I'm going to say it again. Leave the take me as I am mentality behind. Nobody has to take you as you are. Okay, and the people who do have to accept you just the way that you are, like maybe like your mother, <laughs> if you're lucky. You know, like I understand like romanticizing that concept of unconditional love, but you have to work your way there. I'm sorry, but like unconditional love can be a beautiful thing once you get there in a relationship with somebody. But at the beginning, love is very like all things are conditional. Okay, maybe that love isn't conditional, but being invited on a double date with a really quality guy, that's conditional. It is. It just is. Being invited to a house party with a bunch of well-to-do, you know, affluent people, that's conditional. Being invited to, you know, a networking event in a very competitive field, conditional. Being invited to a mastermind with a lot of other successful people, conditional. A lot of things in this world are conditional, and you need to start to acknowledge that if you are going to be serious about your level up. I understand that this is like a little bit harsh, but it is what it is. Like, we need to be real in the world today about all the people that you know and start to think very honestly about what those people think about you. What are those people saying about you when you're not in the room with them? What are those people saying about you to other people? Do you need to start cutting certain people off and out of your life? You probably do. I see this a lot with women. You feel like very like pressure to have like all of these friends, especially like uh, like all of these like acquaintances, these people that you've been friends with since high school, especially black women in America, you have people like social relationships going on and you were just like kind of sort of around each other when you were like 14 years old and now they still know about you and know about what you're doing now that you're 29. Why? <laughs> you are going to have to start cutting the access, cutting the cord to some of these people, especially if you suspect that these people do not truly like you, that they don't support you, that they don't support what you do. You're just gonna have to cut the cord with them. So go through your social medias and just start, you know, like either delete the entire thing, honestly, because like if you're not selling anything, you really don't need to be on Instagram like that. If you are not, you know, like an influencer, you don't need to be on like TikTok, YouTube posting content, just to be honest. And like Facebook, honestly, just delete it. <laughs> delete the entire thing you don't need to be looking at other people's lives they don't need to be looking at you like giving you the evil eye just cut it off that's number one with the social media stuff when it comes to people that you actually interact with on like a regular basis and i mean people that you're seeing like once a week you need to get out there and start working on your reputation so if there's anything that is negative that's being said about you or that people think about you you need to honestly assess what that is and start to correct it because when I tell you like the first thing that like an affluent guy if you get to that stage the first thing that these people are going to do is start to ask other people about you and I've seen a lot of relationships not even you know hit the road and get started because the girl has a bad reputation so you need to like start to understand that and start to like work it correct the narrative do whatever you need to do if you need to set the record straight on something or if you need to explain something if you have made any reference to sex work for example i'm sorry you need to go ahead and correct the narrative set people straight and say that you would never do that you would never be any kind of sex worker or sugar baby if people are suspecting you are or saying something about you that's the kind of thing that you immediately have to start to correct you cannot out like outrun a bad reputation you really just can't so you have to start where you are and start really doing the work to correct your reputation and build a positive one all right so that last section was a little intense but this next one is going to be very um less intense so we're just going to take a bit of a breather here develop your financial literacy 
this is also a huge thing that really needs to be focused on although i think that's much more like common knowledge that we all kind of need work in this area i think people more so struggle to know what they don't know you know it's an unknown unknown <laughs> as some people like to say like you just don't know what you don't know and that makes it very hard to get started because there's just a lot of snake oil salesmen out here there's a lot of people who are looking to benefit from you financially and therefore like they're just saying like all this random stuff about money and it's just like cryptocurrency is it a scam blah 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 like if you lack financial literacy you lack discernment when it comes to finances and you don't know what's real what's fake who's trying to you know steer you in this direction or sell you something it's just really hard to tell so i really want to encourage you to start developing basic financial literacy. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, think about actual literacy, right? When it comes to just being able to read, the first thing that you need to do is start to understand the terms related to finance, the terms related to money. If you don't know what APR is, why don't you? If you don't know what, you know, like a price to earnings ratio is, that's the kind of thing that you need to start to be able to understand financial literacy. The actual terms, the language of finance. Those things are things that you're just going to have to start to learn bit by bit, piece by piece, and that all starts with education. Now, how are you actually going to do that? I really recommend that you start to just follow media related to finance. Even if you're not going to start like investing, if you're not going to be like a stock trader or blah, blah, blah. I recommend that you take like some time out of your week. Just budget it and like slap on your schedule that you're going to take a second to consume some pieces of financial media and you're just going to learn. You're going to sit there with like a pen and paper and you're going to try your best to follow the conversation, especially like if it's above your head and you don't understand. You don't want to be intimidated. You want to get to the point where you have a can-do attitude and you imagine yourself again as taking responsibility for yourself instead of thinking that you're not good at this or that you don't know anything about this or whatever, like limited mindset. You want to have a growth mindset. You want to think, okay, I can learn this. I can come to understand this. And therefore, you want to keep engaging with that thing. So you're going to sit there, watch it, consume that piece of information. You're going to sit there with like a pen and paper if you have to and take notes. Start to talk about like what's being um, discussed in the episode. What are people, you know, discussing? Like what is the topic? What are the pieces of evidence that are being used to support a certain claim? You know, are there charts? Are there graphs? Are there, you know, like what kind of like visual is being shown? What do the scales on that thing say? Like what does the X axis versus the Y axis say? And like what is being like seen as like the independent variable versus the dependent variable? What is going, what's happening, right? Usually like the independent variable is time and what is the result, right? Whether it's, you know, like a certain earnings over time, for example, what does that say to you? The next thing I want you to do is start to look into books about finance. In my opinion, the best books on finance are going to be by Susie Orman, I understand that Susie Orman is kind of like, you know, all of the finance bros hate her just because like Susie Orman is very like no nonsense. She doesn't talk about getting rich. She doesn't talk about how you can be like a mega millionaire, billionaire, the next Warren Buffett. She talks about basic financial literacy, especially as it pertains to your everyday woman. Now, finally, we're getting into the very common part of the level up, but we're going to talk about more of the work that needs to go into it. And you want to start to bump yourself up life's ladder. Now, one of the insults, like the very common insults that I see like a lot from people, and I just think like it's such like a loser thing to say about somebody, it's calling somebody a social climber. I truly feel like if you're not socially climbing, what are you doing? I understand like that is kind of, you know, like a cutthroat statement, but like, honestly, if you're not socially climbing, what are you doing? Like, are you just like hanging out with people who are like losers and like giving them your time for I don't, like charity? Like, 
are you gonna get it back like a like a refund on your taxes for this like what are you doing literally you need to be surrounding yourself with people who are better than you and you know using that to elevate yourself socially I just feel like that's a blanket statement about everyone and if you are someone's friend you should be flattered that they see you as having something that they don't have or you know like um you know like <laughs> i guess like complimenting them in some area that they're lacking where they're hoping that something about you is gonna like rub off on them like some positive quality that you have is gonna like that they are going to start to embody that quality through spending time with you i feel like if you are really someone who is like accomplished in life you should find that flattering but you know a lot of people you know if you were a little bit of a loser i understand like why you would find that threatening anyways when it comes to bumping yourself up the social ladder, I want you to start to look at every area of your life and start to look at people who are like contributing to the version of yourself that you wrote down in our first step here, which is the most compelling, enticing, and delicious vision of your future. Start to surround yourself with people who have those things going on in their lives. So if you want to be, you know, like a a big like family person if you want to be a mother and a wife you want to start to surround yourself with mothers and wives if you want to be you know like i don't know like a coastal coastal granddaughter or somebody who is i guess like just uh and more like an affluent relationship or something like that like living a luxury lifestyle you want to start to get to know the girls who are really living that life and you can definitely do this i have a lot of you know videos on my channel about networking and where to meet people where to meet like really high quality affluent women because like those women are the key to success when it comes to dating affluent men let me just say but you know definitely feel free to like go and search on my channel for that video after this one highly recommend it but yeah when it comes to bumping yourself up the ladder you just want to start where you are and move piece by piece so if you are currently in a relationship, you want to look at the way that this guy is able to contribute to your life in a positive way. And don't be so all or nothing about it. If you are in a certain situation, you like the situation, but maybe you feel like it's not going to end maybe the way that you want, plan your exit. I've talked about this before, but you can consider it like a starter relationship. Just, you know, like use it, especially if you're in like your younger 20s right now. Just use it to explore, you know, learn what you like, what you don't like. And start to really get this guy to invest in you as much as he can. And then, like, as you are planning your exit, you know, planning, you know, the end, planning for the end of this relationship, think about how you're going to pivot into your next relationship from this one. I am telling you, honestly, don't let people kind of shame you out of this or tell you not to do something that is good for you you need to start prioritizing you at the end of the day because other people they are prioritizing themselves you don't need to be somebody else's like placeholder and then be heartbroken in order to be quote unquote a good person you have to let the martyr attitude go so i really want you to start to think about how you're going to start to bump yourself up life's ladder look at your situation in fact if you have a situation that's more specific than this and you want me to like start to think about like how i would pivot from your situation i would love to do that <laughs> So comment down below and let me know more about like what's going on with you. I am not like nearly as judgy as like this video might make it seem. I am a huge problem solving like type of personality. So if you're interested in that, just comment down below. Let me know a little bit more about like what your struggles are, what you are struggling to fix. And I will get back to you <laughs> probably with a comment, maybe with a video. I don't know. But let me know like what it is that you feel like is holding you back. No, that's gonna be it for me. I have nearly talked my own like oh my god like i'm ready to lose my voice right now i will see you in my next video so if you've enjoyed this please like and subscribe and check out the rest of the videos on my channel i will see you next time